back to today's video today is sunday june 9th 2024 and today we're going to be talking about a brand new poll that was released on june 3rd compiled of two months worth of data of 2,000 registered latino voters from five battleground states arizona north carolina nevada texas and pennsylvania now, these are states with large Latino voting populations that very much matter in a presidential or just generally speaking, any type of election in these states. These are ones that have been at some of the most uh, at the forefront of both presidential campaigns from 2020 and at the front of discussions that we've seen in 2024 about where President Biden and President Trump really need to do well in in order to win the election. When you take a look at states like Arizona and North Carolina, two states, 11 electoral votes in Arizona, 16 in North Carolina, six in Nevada, uh, 40 in Texas, uh, and 19 in Pennsylvania, these states genuinely could make a tremendous impact on the outcome of this election. It could be some of the most defining states and defining moments for the Biden and Trump campaigns, depending on how they're doing here. And what we've seen on the national you know, metrics here and what we've seen in terms uh, of national discourse is that President Biden is supposedly seeing excessive bleeding across a number of these states, excessive bleeding across a number of different demographic groups, and namely Latino voters. And a lot of that has been inspired from the 2022 midterm elections, when we saw that on the national average in 2020, President Biden won Latino voters 65 to 32, a 33 point difference. In 2022, that lead for Democrats narrowed to just 21%. What was 33 reduced down to 21, arguably voters on the Democratic side and strategists and politicians were worried that this now meant that Democrats were seeing a significant decrease in terms of overall support. And while there may be some merit to the idea that Democrats are, in fact, losing support amongst Latino voters, because I do think in pockets of this nation, that absolutely is true. When it comes down to the battleground states, President Biden is largely performing nearly identical to where he was in 2020 in the head-to-head -head matchup. And the reason why I think this is super important, and we talked about it in today's earlier video, is that when you take a look at some of the more interesting headlines, is that, sure, when it comes down to Latino voters, there is actually slipping on both Biden and Trump's side. But a lot of the narrative has been simply formed by the fact that a lot of these polls have very small sample sizes, meaning that when you're talking about roughly 13% of the American electorate in 2022, just 11%. And when you average these out and you're using metrics that roughly get 12% of respondents to be self-identified Latino voters, you are talking about in most cases, maybe 200 voters. And so when you have that small of a sample size, it's a lot harder to have perfect numbers and a genuine answer to the overall exit poll or the polling sample or whatever it might be, which means that in theory, maybe just 10, you know, 10 people you pull that might be identified as Latino voters, but might all be from a similar area, similar region, and might be more conservative or liberal leaning, you will find that the data is not as accurate because the sample size is smaller. And so what I do appreciate a lot about this poll is that it has 2,000 registered voters and specifically from the five battleground states. You have Arizona, you have Nevada, Texas, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. And so these states really are super, super important. 92 electoral votes that if Donald Trump wins all of these states, he actually wins the election. If Joe Biden wins all of these states, he also wins the election. And so these states could make, again, a tremendous impact on the outcome of whoever wins the presidency, but also to really goes to show exactly the extent of power that Latino voters have in these states and where Democrats could really run up the numbers in order to win the election. And so getting back to this point about what we see here is that, you know, what this tells us is that while there may be some bleeding when it comes down to RFK Jr., but it comes down to Cornell West and Jill, Cornell West. Cornell West and Jill Stein, is that third-party voters and third-party support here is rising amongst Latina voters, but is generally still something that is only contingent on them being on the ballot and their presence maintaining itself through the general election, which, newsflash, probably won't happen as the debates only show a head-to-head -head race, and as more things start to really come out, that it is a Trump versus Biden matchup. Back to the point, though, of the head-to-head, -head, Joe Biden leads Donald Trump by 20 points across battleground states. Now, to put that into perspective in 2020, the average here when it came down to the national was that Latino voters 65 to 32. So you're talking roughly 33% of the electorate was you know, going to 33% uh, difference here between those who supported Biden and Trump amongst Latino voters. And so in theory, it might seem like, okay, there is a decrease in support, but recognize that on the national average, you found that Joe Biden did better on the national than he did in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada, which means, which means those Latino voters that are grouped in across the national average more than likely are going to favor President Biden more, which means that it makes sense that the swing state average here 
is decreased for President Biden because you're polling competitive states, you're polling competitive regions, and arguably Texas, which makes a lot of sense that it is grouped into it in theory when you're talking about big pockets of Latino voters in a number of these states. But also, this is not one of the states that Democrats are really fighting for. With that being said, when I look back at the 2022 midterms, I also think, too, Democrats might look at this and say, even though Latino support nationally did see an overall, you know, 11, 12 point shift, it wasn't enough to doom Democrats in the elections. And I mean that earnestly. When you take a look at the states, for instance, that Democrats are focusing on when it comes down to Latino voters this time around, and also what the poll actually suggested here, they seem to show that Democrats are doing just as well as they did in 2020, and arguably even 2022 on the national average in states like North uh, Nevada and Arizona and Pennsylvania. Three states that Democrats won in 2022. North Carolina was the only other state here that voted for Republicans with the Senate race here, and Ted Budd actually underperformed all expectations in the Senate race. And so when you take a look at that, despite the national bleeding, and despite the swing state bleeding of Democrats amongst Latino voters, it still wasn't enough to win Republicans practically anything in those three competitive states, and they were very easily slated to win North Carolina, and they actually underperformed the polls by roughly three to four points. Now, the governor's race is where it gets a bit more tricky and where I genuinely could see concern here for Democrats, but also do believe that if Democrats are performing this well among swing state Latino voters, they're probably performing well nationally, even better, again, largely in line with what we saw back in 2020. And the big thing about expanding the sample size is that you get more accurate data because it's focused on more people and can get a better representative sample across the country. Back to my point about governor elections, Katie Hobbs was carried across the finish line largely because of Latino voters. And yes, a decrease in support for Republicans amongst suburban voters, specifically white suburban women that did see a decrease in support from 2020 to 22 in favor of the Democratic Party. But a big voting base here for Democrats at the fundamentals is our Latino voters in Arizona. They also, again, are important in states like Pennsylvania that we talked about here, where Josh Shapiro won by 15 points in this election. North Carolina didn't have a race. Texas did, though, but this was Greg Abbott's worst election performance since he was elected governor. And might I add, he is largely a very popular uh, governor here, and I do believe he will run for another term. And with that being said, I want to go to Nevada because I think this is the example of where you could find a decrease in support amongst Latino voters making an impact on the outcome of an election against the Democratic Party. Joe Lombardo ended up winning the Republican here with 48.8% of the vote. Now, in terms of effectiveness, Joe Lombardo as a governor in a state like Nevada, a very gerrymandered Democratic state, probably makes no impact on the outcome of legislative policies and decision making at the state capitol. When it comes down to Steve Sisolak, we found that despite being the Democrat here and, you know, alongside the same ballot as Democrats who won three out of the four House races in Nevada, Democrats who won the Senate race in Nevada, Steve Sisolak ultimately got the short end of the stick, which means that there was some vote bleeding here. And a lot of it actually can be contributed to Latino voters abandoning the Democratic Party on the statewide level when it came down to the governor's race, not on the Senate race and not on the House race. But when it came down to governor, there were certainly voters there that voted for Democrats down ballot with the exception of governor voting red. And so I think that's where Democrats really, in any case, need to worry. But ultimately, what we find is that the numbers aren't that amazing for President Trump compared to where they were in 2020. There is, in fact, bleeding from President Biden. That is an undeniable fact. But it's not to the extent that I think we've seen spun by mainstream media that gets maybe 200 Latino voters responded, and they seem to make decisions uh, and, and build national discourse that implicates the entire Hispanic and Latino community. I also do want to recognize, too, that at the very obvious level, when you take a look at Hispanic voters, Latino voters across the country, they are not a monolith, right? When you talk about battleground states and the regions where you do find Democrats doing quite well amongst them, they often are in different pockets. For instance, in areas like Miami and Broward County in Florida, Miami-Dade County. Democrats do significantly worse there amongst Hispanic voters than they do in other battleground states. And so I think that's why when you see national numbers here and decrease in national support, Florida shifted 19 points to the right in 2020, in 2022 compared to 2020, or 17 points to the right. Obviously, when you have a huge chunk of Latino voters hailing from a state like Florida, that makes a huge difference. Same thing in New York, when you saw national Latino voters, sorry, Latino voters, huge chunk of them in New York, typically not talked about much because it's not a battleground state on the presidential level, but made all the difference when it came down to congressional level and also the governor's race there. And so when they're grouped in on the national average, 
it shows us something. And so this actual intentional narrowing in these battleground states does tell us a bigger story, does tell us here that, sure, there might be some decrease in support for President Biden, but still largely is in line with what we saw in 2020. And no matter what, even with a decrease for President Biden, there hasn't been an increase for President Trump. All the polls that we've seen, this is a different one here, the one I'm showing you on your screen right now, is different than the one we were just talking about from Voto Latino. But this one does show that despite improvements, or sorry, decreases in support for President Biden, there are in fact no improvements, is what I meant to say, no improvements for President Trump since 2020. Donald Trump's support amongst Latino voters is largely unchanged. And this continues to feed into this consistent narrative we have seen that has been very evident recently in new polls and existing polls that President Trump's support has seemed to be reaching a ceiling point, right? Where he's at the maximum that he can get at, which is why he has yet to hit 50%, because over 50% of this country does not want Donald Trump to be the next president. With that being said, President Biden has lost some core support from his core constituencies. You see it in Michigan, in Dearborn. You see it with, what we're ha with what's happening across the country in some of these more important regions, especially amongst minority voters, where routinely Democrats are running up the margins here we're not seeing that to full force. They're not going to Republicans. They're not even going third party. They are becoming undecided. But still, when push comes to shove, when you take a look at these battleground states and when voters are extremely aware of the head-to-head -head matchup between Trump and Biden, they still come back home for the Democratic Party. And so I think that's really the main takeaway from this is sort of that, you know, Republicans aren't in a point where they are all of a sudden winning Hispanic voters in massive droves outside of Florida and outside of some parts of Texas, that really hasn't been the national true narrative based on the election results that we're seeing based on larger sample sizes on national polls. I mean, the actual data is telling us that Democrats are in a much better position than what Fox News might be spouting or even some more, you know, center or even left leaning uh, publications might suggest there absolutely is bleeding. But the extent at which it's been covered is absolutely false. And so, again, reminders back to 2022 about what it actually looked like when Democrats did, in fact, lose a significant chunk of support, 12 percent nationwide from the last election. While there was some shifts when it came down to the 2020 uh, you know, presidential election versus what we saw in 2022, especially when you take a look at states like Florida and Miami-Dade County, which shifted 17 points to the right. Sure, the bleeding did, in fact, exist there. But that's what Democrats are focused on in 2024. They're focused on winning states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, states like North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. And while bleeding would uh, inevitably negatively impact Democrats, you know, that, that's an undeniable fact. At some point, this bleeding here is going to push Democrats away from winning and being able to be in you know, a better position to win. At the same time, the question is, in 2024, is the bleeding substantive enough? that it means Democrats are no longer the viable and most likely candidates to win in states like Arizona and states like Pennsylvania. And expanding beyond that, states like Texas, because they're not the favorites, have never been the favorites, but are they, you know, in a worse off position than they were in 2020? Same thing in North Carolina, same thing in Nevada. And so my takeaway from this has been pretty consistently, I do think that the bleeding is enough that in a state like Nevada, which has already been pushed very much to the extreme on the Democratic side, if Biden doesn't rebound amongst Latino voters, I do think he could lose Nevada. With that being said, though, I think when you're talking about an influx of Latino voters in states like Arizona, growing, rapidly growing, Phoenix metro area, Maricopa County, right? You're talking about a huge influx of minority voters here, which means despite maybe some bleeding, it's offset by the sheer amount of increased voters on the Democratic Party side. Georgia, on the other hand, I think Democrats have started to see more bleeding beyond the most important, uh, you know, the, sorry, the topic of conversation here, meaning that there's of things that are equally as important to the Democratic base there. Black voters, right? You're talking about Georgia, which has a whole, you know, number of different demographic groups that are crucial to Democratic, Democratic victory in states like Georgia, right? Same thing in North Carolina. Both of those I have as Republican states in my election prediction. So it really just depends. I think ultimately what we have found here is that there is, in fact, some level of bleeding, but nothing of substance to say that Latino voters have in whole abandoned the Democratic Party in the way that the media has spun this narrative. And I think that is a very, very fair statement, especially given the data that we are working with. I think it will be very interesting to see what the 2024 exit polling data will tell us, because I think that will show us, in the truest sense, what Democrats have lost and what Republicans have actually won. While there may be some level of decreased support for President Biden, there isn't all of a sudden this massive influx of support for Republicans outside of states like Florida.
Those are very, very few examples, and they don't represent the entirety of Latino voters across the country. And huge sample size data reiterates that point. And so watching this state and watching, you know, these states rather, these five states, watching how the Latino vote actually breaks down in these states, I think it will be very important, very important for not only this election, of course, but for future ones, 2026, 2028. Are we now seeing, a, you know, re-reckoning in support for Latino voters across the country? 2024 could confirm or deny many suspicions that many political scientists have been starting to have, starting to come up with in some cases. And so I'm very fascinated by, uh, you know, the way that we study demographic groups and how they vote, what we will see when it comes down to exit polling data, not only from CNN, but other groups like the New York Times and the Washington Post, because I think we have a lot to learn from them, from Pew Research and other organizations that do genuinely give us a very interesting insight into elections and how different groups vote and why they vote for the way that they do. And so definitely want to keep an eye out on that. Right now, though, the national numbers don't seem to suggest too drastic of a change from 2020, which arguably is really good news for President Biden compared to a lot of the media narrative that we've been seeing in these battleground states and across the country. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.